Hello, friends. Welcome to the Youth Ministry 101 podcast by Net Canada. Net Canada is a ministry whose mission is to challenge young Catholics to love Christ and embrace the life of the church. My name is Matthew. And I'm Julia. And together we're going to be hosting this podcast. We're very excited to be starting today with you guys. And we're going to be talking about three ways to build a great culture in your youth ministry. A huge thanks to our co-missionaries, uh, the people who support us financially and spiritually. Um, our ministry can't operate without people supporting us, so we are very thankful for everyone. If you would like to become a co-missionary, you can head on over to our website. Netcanada.ca And you can donate to us on there if you'd like to become a supporter. Also, if you want to follow us on social media, go to at NetCanada to do that. Yep. on We've got basically every social media so mm-hmm. our instagram game is strong <laughs> <laughs> it's true it is we've we've got an awesome team working on our tech and stuff so one of which is k dog in the back kira <laughs> kira's like i don't like that nickname kira doesn't like How that about nickname. special k special <laughs> oh, yeah, that's even better. worse <laughs> We got Kieran in the back. <laughs> Huge thanks. Shout out to Kieran. He's our tech guy. He also makes a lot of the great social media things. So thank you for being our tech man. Thanks, Kieran. Let's dive into this topic. <clears throat> so three ways to build a great culture in your youth ministry. The first way we're going to talk about is welcoming. Do you have any cool stories about welcoming? I do. As a matter of fact, <laughs> when I was thinking about this podcast, the first and immediate story that came to mind was actually my youth minister from back home. Shout out to Ray Reitzel, mm. um, his wife, Jen. Um, it was after a Sunday mass and there was this new person mm-hmm. in a pew mm-hmm. and everybody noticed she was new. But a lot of times we don't have the courage. I, I sure don't. But to like go up yeah. and say like, hello and introduce yourself. Mm-hmm. But Jen just strutted on over to this woman and was just like, hey, I feel like I should know you. So simple, so true. And roped her into youth ministry, welcomed her into the parish because I think one of our biggest fears in life is to feel alone. Mm -hmm. And and just a statement like that can make a world of a difference. Yeah, I'm sure that Mm -hmm. like broke the ice a lot, made her feel very comfortable. Yeah. That's so important. Um, One big thing that I want to talk about within welcoming is maintenance first mission. So within that, welcoming the people who are already there and continuing to welcome mm-hmm. them and make them mm-hmm. feel at home, but then also reaching out. Because I think oftentimes I've seen it happen in youth groups before where they're either very focused and become almost kind of clicky or they're always reaching out and not maintaining the people who are there mm-hmm. already. Um, so I think that's <clears throat> very important with welcoming and that's a balance that you'll have to find like for your own parish and for your own youth group. But it's a very important balance to find. Life is all about balance. Actually, cool story on that, if you don't mm-hmm. mind. Yeah, no problem. Um, so a uh, parish here in Ottawa that's thriving, St. Mary's, there's a mm-hmm. there's a big young adult um, community, and they used to do brunches every Sunday. Wow. Um, and every time, so speaking of welcoming, every time I would go to the parish, people, like, it's not my parish, but whenever I would go, people would just strangers from the community would just say like, is this your first time? And just engage in conversation, make sure I felt welcomed. Mm. Um, But one of the Sundays where we were headed to brunch, my friend, Heather, she was like, saw this new girl that was an exchange student from Ireland. And she was just like, yeah. And so she, she brought her over to me and just did like this handoff. She was just like, (laughs) Hey, Julia, this is Fanola. She's new here. Can you bring a brunch? And I was like, Sure, absolutely. And I walked on over. She became a huge part of the community um, during her year and is so like loves Canada and Ottawa and wants to come back. But Mm. I think that that kind of speaks into the maintenance and mission. Like Mm. there's already a thriving community in in Ottawa with young adults. But how do we how do we grow that? How do Mm. we reach out? And it's so, so, so simple. Mm -hmm. And you don't even have to do it. You can you can hand them off to somebody else. Totally. And I think once you have that thriving community um which like you want to get to you may not not have that already necessarily but once you have that it's just so natural to welcome people into it and be like bring a friend Mm -hmm. and they bring a friend into it and then the friend is immediately like welcomed into that community which Mm -hmm. i think to the credit of our brothers and sisters in the protestant church is something that they're very good at Mm -hmm. and 
our game is a little weak in that in the Catholic <laughs> Church. But I'm, I'm seeing improvements. And like, even in myself, I have so much to grow, so far to grow in that area. I myself am introverted. So it's very, it's like, I have to jump out of my shell in order to like welcome a new person. Mm. But there are people who are gifted at making connections. And we both know someone who's very good at that, Heather Penny. I'm just going <laughs> to shout her out. She's very good at this. Mm -hmm. And she's not going to like that for me shouting her out. But she's very good at connecting people and being like, hey, you like you should go talk to that guy. He He's new here. Um, and that that welcoming, I think I've already seen. I've only been here for a few months, but I've already seen a lot of fruit born in that. Um, and I think it's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, outreaching is very important, but also maintaining within. Very important as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think, I think we can move on to the second point now. Great. I oh man, my ears are getting so hot. These headphones do not have good circulation or whatever they need. I should get little air conditioners inside. Of that. Oh man. Okay. So, model affirming speech is uh, point number two. Matthew, I think you're so welcoming. Wow. Thank you, Julia. <laughs> Julia, I have something to say about this in regards to you. Oh. I think. Of all the people I know, you're definitely in the top three most affirming people that I have ever met. Who are my contenders? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Who can I take down? <laughs> Who can I out affirm? <laughs> I, but yeah, I, I think like I remember coming onto net and like, uh, so I, I did net. I did a few years of mission, um, and uh, Julia was a recruiter for net. And I just remember like the email exchanges, like when I was applying to join net and there was a few emails exchanged, I was always like, wow, Julia is just so nice. And so there was like, there was a joy there, but it was deeper than just like a surfacey joy. And out of that, you always like poured out just like affirmations. And I was like, whoa. And that itself builds a culture of affirming. And yeah, I, I can see it like every time you, you come to net training, and there's all the all the new netters. We call them netters. <laughs> um, yeah, that, there's kind of like a shift. It's like, oh, Julia's here. All of a sudden, there's all these like affirmations being poured out. And like, I guess to clarify, affirmation um, is like when you're complimenting somebody, but usually deeper than like a surface. Very comment. genuine. Yeah, genuine compliments. Mm -hmm. That's a good way of putting it. Anyways, that's actually my favorite sport, affirmation volleyball. <laughs> not not to like deflect a compliment, like receive and you know thank you and praise God, all that. Mm -hmm. But there's always something good that you can say about something or somebody because mm. God's promise of providence is His goodness is in all things, and so mm -hmm. we just have to look for it mm -hmm. and point it out. That's beautiful. Providence. I feel like we're going to be talking about providence a lot. Yes, <laughs> my favorite. <clears throat> so we actually gave a talk. During net training, so net fall training happens in usually September, October. Every year, the new missionaries are trained. Um, do you want to give a little bit of a spiel of what net does every year in case we have uh, listeners who aren't sure what net's mission is? The training or ministry? Uh, just like the ministry in general. Sure, yeah. yeah. We recruit approximately 50 Catholic young adults. And we, um, they're from all over Canada and sometimes international as well. And then we place them on teams during fall training, which is in and of itself such a rich experience. Um, and so we put them on teams and then we send them all across Canada. We have two types of ministries. So discipleship ministry, which is more localized and it's focused on what that area needs and mm -hmm. building up youth ministry in a parish, raising up leaders. Um, and then we'll send often a team back for at least another year after that, um, if not more. We also have retreat ministry, which is those teams will often travel, or even if they are in a local setting, they will they extend their reach to more than just one parish in a school. They'll go to multiple mm -hmm. uh, parishes and schools and put on retreats. Um, and that ministry is often, you know, especially with our traveling teams, it can be just one day and then they're on to the next place. Whereas with our discipleship teams, it's for a year that mm -hmm. they're in the same location. Longer term. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And they both have their benefits. Um, oh, yeah. And I, I, the three years that I served were all on parish teams or like we were localized. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, so lots of fruit from that. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to share stories throughout the podcast about it. But thank you for explaining what NET is. <laughs> You're welcome. And, and the main focus for both of those teams and our ministry in general is just that youth encounter Christ. So mm -hmm. how that 
looks like with the different teams and ministry styles is different, but same end goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So every year we train the new missionaries, which is what happens at fall training. And there's a talk that's given pretty early on, I think in the first or second week of training, mm -hmm. seasoned with salt talk. And if there are any net missionaries listening to this, mm -hmm. this will this will all sound familiar. And check your notes, maybe <laughs> we'll compare them, see if we're doing a good job bringing the talk back. But uh, this is from the seasoned with salt talk. A lot of the notes that we're going to bring about affirming speech. So there's a there's a line from Proverbs: "Death and life are in the power of the tongue." That's pretty dramatic. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that, Julia? That words can heal. Mm -hmm. And they can also wound. And I'm sure that you and I have definitely experienced that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's just so powerful. And I, I've seen every every year when there's young adults that come together, everybody brings their own baggage, you know, to net. Everybody has different ways of talking. Everybody has different ways of relating with one another. Um, and I like to like, you know, have you seen The Chosen? The show. <laughs> Question of the century. <laughs> Gotta bring um, the chosen into this. <laughs> a few episodes, yeah. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. I think the chosen is so beautiful. One of the reasons being is that you have this group of people who are following Jesus. Um, so if you haven't seen the chosen, it's a show that's being produced right now. Um, it's currently just finished its second season, but it's Jesus and his disciples in the early days of ministry, and it just depicts so beautifully the culture that Jesus creates within his disciples. But he doesn't like push people mm. right away to like change and like you can't do mm -hmm. this, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. Stop being a bad person. Be a good person. <laughs> Be like me. He doesn't do that right away, but like he's just so loving and so accepting of where they're at, but he loves them too much for them to stay there. Mm. And I think that's a huge part of what I've seen in the culture of net, especially at training. Um so yeah, we're just gonna go over some speech patterns that we can avoid. Um, and hopefully in your own youth group, youth ministry, um, you can kind of evaluate where things are at in terms of these and see what you need to work on more. Maybe maybe this is within your own um, youth leader team. Maybe this is within you know parish council. I'm not too sure, but whatever it is. The four speech patterns that we want to avoid um, when we want to build up this culture. We want to build a good culture, not a negative culture. Um, the first that we want to avoid is slander. I pulled up my trusty old Google here because sometimes I forget what basic words mean. But slander is the action or crime of making a false spoken statement damaging to a person's reputation. I think that slander has become very popular as of late, especially on the internet. Just lots of like, uh, well, this was a few years back, but roast tracks, uh, diss tracks, and just like roasts were very mm -hmm. popular. And there's an odd level of like, pleasure people derive from seeing other people getting like torn down and um yeah it's it's a challenge but like christ has told us like what love one another and that can mean like not partaking in that and it's so easy to when like everyone else is doing it, it doesn't seem like anyone's getting hurt from it mm -hmm. you know the guy who's getting roasted is laughing it's okay it might not actually be okay mm -hmm. that's something that we need to evaluate so we want to avoid slander the second is gossip. Do you have anything to say about gossip, Julia? Don't do it. <laughs> um, True. Actually, yeah, a couple things. Um, mm -hmm. I remember uh, Matt Frad um, giving a talk, and, and something he said is if you have to preface something you're saying with, I don't mean for this to be gossip, but it probably is. Mm. And I actually, uh, had the privilege of living with his sister, Emma Frad, um, and something that she did in our household of women, um, I lived in a Catholic household, um, mm -hmm. was often just very gently, like you mentioned, Matthew, not being judgmental in these things, which is so, so important. Mm -hmm. um, if we found ourselves just as women talking about people, like whether it's their relationships, like oh, what's the age difference between this couple? Like, mm -hmm. you know, like just for the sake of talking about them, mm -hmm. she would often just very lightheartedly, playfully say, is this gossip? And then we'd kind of be like, yeah, we, we don't need to be talking about them, you know? Mm. And so I think, yeah, talking about someone just for the sake of, you know, speculation mm -hmm. and whether it's true or not, I, I 
don't think is healthy and we all fall into it. But I think it's it's such a good thing to call people higher and do that so gently. Mm -hmm. And um, the third is sarcasm. Sarcasm. <sighs> we all love sarcasm a little bit, I think. <laughs> Everyone likes to pepper it in a little bit. But I think and I have seen sarcasm go too far. Um, and do you know what the root where like the root of the word is Julia of sarcasm? I don't know it in Greek, but I know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really either, but the root of the word I think in Greek is tearing of the flesh. To tear flesh, yep. And that's a very uh, graphic visual, but mm -hmm. it serves a point I think in showing that sarcasm, when taken too far, oftentimes it isn't needed, but when taken too far can have that effect yeah. maybe not literally tearing people's flesh but um yeah it can it can tear people down in different ways that you don't see sometimes just evaluating our speech and seeing am i being sarcastic is this necessary you know mm -hmm. we're gonna get to a few questions that julia brought up in the talk as well that will help you evaluate whether you should use things in your speech or not the last of the four speech patterns we want to avoid is negative humor negative jokes. I don't know. Do you have anything to say about that? <laughs> well, I'm just thinking like when I think of people who I really respect mm -hmm. in in reference to their humor, it's not at the expense of someone else or themselves. Mm. I feel like that's such an art to to be mastered. Yeah. Um, but those are the people that I find the most genuinely funny. Mm. When they're not cutting people down and or themselves. Yeah. 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 So those are the those are the four. These can be hard to talk about sometimes, but we all need to we all need to check ourselves before we wreck, wreck ourselves. ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so you have three questions that I, I see that you added to the talk that we had before. Mm -hmm. What are those three questions, Julia? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> this excites me so, so, so much because we we shared about it, Matthew and, and I at our fall training. Um, but it it's something so much deeper for me and has taken root in my life and, and in friendships and relationship. Um, a good way to find out if, if what you're about to say kind of fits into those categories that Matthew shared, um, ask yourself three simple questions. Is it true? Is it necessary? And is it kind? Because just because something's true does not mean we have license or should say it. Yeah. <laughs> um, is it necessary? So something might be true and necessary to share. Is it is it kind to share it? Or even in your sharing of it, is there a way that you can do so kindly? Mm -hmm. So I know that that is something that's stuck with me and, and a principle that I've chosen to live by. Don't do it perfectly. Um, mm -hmm. But it's it's such a helpful tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oops, I just knocked the table. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I've started using that more since, since you said it and been like, well, there's lots of things that I say aren't necessary. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's good. Um, so those are the, the negative speech patterns we want to avoid, but we don't want to focus so much on those that we become like legalistic mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we don't want to fall into that. So we want to, we want to be aware of them, but then look to what are the good things that we can do. And we want to build people up and we're going to talk a little bit more about how mm -hmm. we can build people up. Um, even more so in later podcast episodes. But right now, I just want to bring up a, a really cool stat. Yeah. So this is in regards to the whole topic that we're talking about today of just like building a great culture. Um, so Jacob Douglas, a guy on our staff, pretty cool guy. Maybe he'll be on here sometime. So hmm. or maybe he has been already. I don't, I don't, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> so he brought up this stat that I forgot to write down and I'll have to wing um, <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> I can do it. So I believe this is from a book called Sticky Faith. I'll include it in the show notes. It is a book that talks about how oftentimes the faith does not get passed down to the younger generations. And we're asking the question why this book is addressing that question. And it talks about how a young adult or a, a youth needs five adult mentors in their life. Mm. Um, Usually, I think it said in the stat, like a priest, a parent, a teacher, potentially a youth minister. Um, so like five people who are going to journey with them and listen to them and be affirming to them and welcoming to them. 
um, in their own faith journey. And that is what makes the faith stick. It's like, I've seen it lived out. I've seen good examples of how this can be lived out. And I want that faith. Like I want to live that out and I want to be that person for other people. So that is a pretty awesome statistic. Mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy though, because you see how many people are leaving the faith. And oftentimes it's because they don't have those adult mentors to look up, That's look true. up to. Point number three of the three ways to build a great culture in your youth ministry is model listening. <laughs> we, did, we did it again. Um, I always think of the saying, this is a very popular saying, but God gave you two ears and one mouth. Mm. You're supposed to listen twice as much as you talk. It's ironic right now because I'm doing a lot of talking, <laughs> but this is a podcast, so we have to talk. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> but yeah, I think that <clears throat> I have this note taken down, youth are not heard, or youth are often heard, but not listened to. Mm. And I think that's why a lot of young people act out. And I remember when I was younger, I'm still young, but when I was even younger, I would often do things to get my parents' attention. And I wouldn't know why I would do them exactly, but it was just like, I knew I was being heard, but not listened to. Mm. And that was a frustrating feeling. Um, so yeah, I have the point here again about the Sticky Faith book, the five adults. So if you have those five adult like mentors in your life, Catholic, good Catholic, strong people um, that are like listening to you and hearing you as a young person, I think that's going to make a huge difference. Um, the next point, the power of being present. Mm. I guess that just makes me think of, I don't really have a story as such, but just mm -hmm. um, sometimes we feel like we need to do things or fix things in, in the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but often it's just, it's such a, a gift <laughs> to <laughs> did not do that on present, but just to, just to be present. Because mm -hmm. um, I think... Um, I've been looking into empathy a little bit recently, and mm -hmm. um, often if somebody shares, a, f a friend or a youth or a anybody shares um, a story of how they're doing, a uh, quick and easy response is to try and relate to them and to, and and are it's in such you know good intention to say you're not alone, you know, like to bring it back to yourself. So for me, I often will be like, oh, like. I remember a time that like this happened to me because I want them to not feel alone. Mm. But what I'm learning is just that sometimes you just need to be present and, and to listen and, and to say, I, I don't know what I can do for you right now, but I'm here. Mm. That's very reassuring. Yeah. I can think of many times in my life when hearing along those lines of the, like those words was very, had a big impact on me. Um, I, love the stories that I've heard of Pope John Paul II and Mother Teresa and the power of their presence, like in a room. Mm. I've, I've read a few books, like just talking about how they had this, well, they had Christ was so alive in them. Um, and his love just poured out of them that like Pope John Paul II would walk into a room and he would be talking to somebody. There'd be so many people around, you know, people probably like wanting his autograph, wanting him to bless something. Mm. And he was just talking to somebody. And so many people have said that they felt like they were the only person in the world. Mm. And like he was just totally present to them, just hearing them, listening to them, um, just loving them through that. So I think being present is huge. And I need to work on this so much. I, in my own life, I'm like busy body. I'm like, got to do this, do this, do that. And at the end of the day, I'm like, man, there's so many times I miss an opportunity to be present to people. Just like sit and just to be with mm. them, to hear them and not jump in and offer like quick fixes. Mm. <laughs> so I got to work on that in my own life. But so we want to build a culture of intentionality and authenticity through listening and being present. And it's very important not to do these things out of a place of like manipulation of being like, mm. I'm going to do this so that mm -hmm. they'll do this, you know, but doing it, it's like we all, you know, we're in this, we're in this field of youth ministry because like we want young people to know Christ. So we want to love them. This is a very good way to love people is being mm -hmm. present and listening to them. And I think a last point in, in the, the way of listening is 
small groups are a great way to build that within the youth group itself. Mm -hmm. So you as a youth minister don't have to be the one who's doing all the listening and being mm -hmm. present, but you build that within. So your youth, your youth leaders are leading these small groups and you have, you know, five to six, maybe if you have a ton of people, 20 to 30, I don't know, <laughs> small-ish groups um, or tiny groups if you only have a few people. But like the young people are hearing each other, they have time to share and they they can be heard and known by the other people in the group. And I can like so many stories in my own life of like being in small groups and ha that having a huge impact because I had something that I wanted to share, but I wasn't sure, like I didn't know where to share it, like what kind of space to share it mm -hmm. in. And small groups like allowed me to share it. And yeah. I was like, whoa, these people actually heard me and they like want to hear me. Creates a safe space to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a very important thing to do. Mm -hmm. So those are the three ways. And I'm sure there's many more ways you can do it. <laughs> uh, but those are the three big ways are model welcoming, affirming speech, and listening to build a great culture in your youth ministry. Mm -hmm. So there's this, this cool verse from Romans I'm going to read out. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That's from Romans chapter 12. We are so happy to have done this podcast, and we are so happy to be here with you. Um, this is the first podcast we've recorded officially, so mm -hmm. <laughs> this was a bit of a road test, and <laughs> I'm very excited for the future of this Me podcast. Me too. So again, a huge thank you to our co-missionaries, the people who support us spiritually and financially. Um, if you would like to become a co-missionary of our ministry and this podcast, you can visit us at www.netcanada.ca. You can also follow us on social media. At Net Canada. Yippers. At, at Net Canada. At, at, <laughs> at, at Net Canada, yes. <laughs> Julia, would you like to lead, or, yeah, would you like to lead us? Would you like to end this podcast off with a prayer? I would love to. All right. If you would all join us in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Good and gracious God, we thank you so much for this opportunity to be together and to to share with your people um, all the ways that you desire to work through us in our ministries. We ask you for all the grace and the strength um, to love those that you put in front of us well and with intentionality. Foster in our hearts and in our communities and in our families, relationships, an upbuilding of your kingdom, help us to bring heaven to earth. We ask all this in your powerful name, Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Julia. You're welcome. And a huge thank you to you for listening to this podcast. Yeah, this thanks. Has been the Youth Ministry 101 podcast by Net Canada. And if you want to leave us a review, I guess you could do that. I'm not too sure how it works on the different <laughs> platforms. This is kind of new to us. But if you want to leave us a review, feel free to do that on whatever platform you're listening to us on. We also have video. You can look at our YouTube channel. If you're already watching this on YouTube, we have other platforms you can listen to this on. So you can head over to our podcast platforms for that. Do you want to end us off? Sure. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us today, for listening, for modeling, listening. Get it? Hey, I, <laughs> yep, well done. <laughs> and we look forward to hanging out with you again soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>